everybody, Coach RJ back here from Fit Club. I'm with Laura Benasaki. We're on part two here. Yesterday, or the last one, we talked about getting into the heart of the problem and what point did Laura hit where she needed to make a change and what are some of the things that she was able to do to get her to the point of taking the first step of creating the best version of herself. Now, I'm not necessarily saying sobriety or drinking because I think, and I'm not trying to downplay that at all. I'm just trying to put it as a problem. It's a conflict. And I think you're at a phase of your life where you realize that this is just one conflict that just consumed you massively. And then when you got rid of that, you're like, oh, okay, now I got this other thing, you know, that I could work on right now. And, but maybe it wasn't as big as this because this was massive to you. And now, you know, these other problems, I feel like you're able to tackle them a little bit better. And so we left off where you, your family said, listen, like take it or leave it. And you decided, which I think is a, like a big, bold move. You decided to take the action. And that's the last thing that we also suggested was for you to, to take action. Even if it's small action, it doesn't have to be perfect, but at least it's going to move you forward. And then now you're into the first phases of taking a meeting where you're the new girl in the room, you know, talk to us about like how that felt walking into your first meeting. You know, how did you feel? Did you feel like I belong here? I'm going to open up and like, yeah, I'm going to like, everything is all good. And was it easy that first step of the journey or what did you go through? And then like to get you to the next phase. So walking into my first meeting, I think was probably one of the scariest things I've ever done. I think I cried the better part of my first meeting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I heard everybody talking and it just, I kind of felt like I was at home mm. and people were telling my story. Mm -hmm. I'm like, how did, how did they know? So the they story? were the same thing? Like, yeah, the same yeah. struggles okay. and, and um, you know, the same base problems mm -hmm. as that, that, um, that insanity of the mind telling you that you could do the same thing over and over again and get different results, mm -hmm. you know? Um, it uh, it was very overwhelming, but I like I said, I definitely felt like I was at home, and um, I kept going back, and I struggled. When you walked in that room, okay, you walked in that room, and I don't know what it like what it, the setup is. I only see it on movies, right? Yeah. So you walk into the room, people are having coffee, whatever. There's chairs. There's there's a podium at the front. It's kind of like a Toastmasters thing, right? And people are sitting there. Did you just go to the back seat and kind of sit in the back corner? I did. <laughs> okay. I, did. I went to the back, <laughs> sat in the corner, yeah. and just 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 listened. Yeah. And there was people on either side of me, yeah. and both approaching me. Just oh, saying, that's is great. This, is this your first meeting? Yeah. Um, you know, we're here for you. Here's my phone number. How many meetings were they in? Oh, Do you know? Do you remember? Probably they were in probably a few years. Okay. Some people were in a few months. Yeah. Uh, there were some in that were 20 years, yeah. 40 years. I mean, there was all different levels of sobriety. This is exactly the same. Okay. And I'm going to walk you through the same scenario. Mm -hmm. Somebody walks in and, you know, our demographic, they've tried every diet. They've tried every kind of pill out there, every type of wrap. You know, a lot of our members don't have the financial income to, you know, it'd be like celebrities. Celebrities go over overboard. What happens to them? They go to some kind of like high end rehab, but you know, like they go spend a week in Mexico, right? right? Whereas here, our customers don't have the ability to go and do liposuction and see, you know, therapists and this and that. So like, we are that kind of like, you know, come here, just try it, see if it's for you, feel it out. And every time, right? Cause it's pretty dark in here. And so when somebody walks through the door, you can't see what's going on inside, right? And so when they walk in the door, they, you know, they always have that same look and they stand right in the corner and they just kind of look around. And, but I'll tell you this, just like that, you know, the staff, I was like, if somebody is standing there, whatever you're doing, make sure that you make them feel welcome immediately because this is the most stressful day of their life. The fact that they inquired was already hard enough for them. The fact that they registered was like, yeah. and the fact that they showed up, I like think that those are huge milestones, right? Whenever somebody comes through the door, like we always try to overwhelm them, like, like or overwhelm them, right? Because we want to make sure that we meet them to where they are. Like we're not all over them in this and that, but we meet the person to where they are because everybody comes in, but they have the similar mindset. They're, they're nervous. They look around the room and they're like, see, you know, and we have a mix of people here, right? We have some really, really good, like 
fit people. And then we have people that are only into their second or third week, but to that person, they look at them and they're like, these guys got their life together. They all eat clean. They never have any struggles. They work out six times a week and they're all beasts, right? <laughs> and so when they come in through the door, you know, we make sure that it's nice and like, like comforting and we want them to know like, it's okay. And like, even when we text them, this is the one thing that I highlight in there. This is day one of many. Right. Don't come in here thinking that you're gonna solve all your problems right away. We're gonna work at this one day at a time. And then the nice thing is we have members like you and they see that, you know, like you guys see them and then you're just like, hey, like his first day and like the same type of deal. So you came into the meeting, you met some people, then like at what point in time did you say, okay, like I'm going all in with this? Uh, so I struggled for a few months and then- So what does that mean struggle? struggled I fell on and off the wagon for a few months so okay. I was sober for 47 days wow then life kind of hit me and yeah. uh, instead of using the program mm -hmm. I used the alcohol to try to cope but it's funny that you think that that's falling off because 47 days like if I put you on a strict nutrition plan for 47 days like mm -hmm. we do 28 day belly burns because I get it 28 days is like at the end of the 28 days people are like they're in a rhythm but they're like I need a break you know what I mean? So, so when people come to the gym and they're like, you know, I worked out straight for a month and then I took, I, you know, I did took took two weeks off or three weeks. I'm like, yeah, but you did a month, right? You know, it's, it's still a win. It's one month of one year, right? So you did, you were on and off. You did the 47 days straight. You kind of went back to old habits, but what is it that like, so you did your old habits. What was going through your head as you were like, you know, falling back into that routine like it wasn't this it couldn't have been the same person that was there six months ago meaning like you would go in you know it was a routine like oh yes it's friday i got all this like liquor this booze whatever you drink and you would like feel good about it and then maybe someday it's gradually got like ah you know this isn't really what i should be doing but now like when you got back onto it what was like going through your head so when I, when I went off the wagon and I started drinking again, um, they say that uh, the Alcoholics Anonymous ruins your, your drinking. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. Because it was in the back of the head yeah. that of what I heard in the meetings and yeah. I thought, like, I shouldn't be doing this, yeah. what am I doing? And so there was that little little voice in the back of my head saying, like, what are you doing? Yeah. But it's true that you can very quickly fall back into old patterns, yeah. and I did. Yeah. And I scared myself enough mm to then want it for myself. Because at first my family gave me an ultimatum. Mm -hmm. You know, if I want help, they're there for me. Mm -hmm. So I went because of that. Mm -hmm. But then I listened to the meetings. Hold on. Somebody looking for their phone. Oh, is that you? Okay. At least it's you and not them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe mute it. Okay, I'm stuck for it. Okay, so we'll come up with the title and a copy for the first one. And then we'll just we'll just spring this. I think this is gonna be another part. Yeah. And then that so this is about so this is the moment. So how this is relating is I'm relating this to so somebody is at home and they're doing their own thing and they're gaining weight and they're overeating and they're unhappy with what they're doing. That's phase one. Okay. Phase two is now they're into the blue. But okay. then I find in the first year of people working out that it's the hardest year, <laughs> you know, before in COVID, it was like somebody al always got COVID, uh, injury, yeah. uh, a divorce or a death. Yeah. Uh, you know, those are always a thing. Injury, divorce, death, um, you know what I mean? Or COVID, yeah. like sickness. Yeah. And so, so that's kind of where we're leading. So we, okay, so let's just, so you, you're left off with uh, talking about um, so you, you, you fell back into old patterns. Okay. So, so I fell back into old patterns. Mm. All right. So, so yeah, so I fell back into old patterns and, um, you know, it, I kept having that voice in the back of my head saying, you know, it, like the, the, the alcoholics not, it's ruined my drinking for me. And I couldn't, I couldn't stay in that, that pattern any longer. So then I wanted it for myself. And then that's when I went in and I committed. And I remember the day, June 7th. Um, 2015, I went into a meeting and um, my sponsor said to me, she said, do you really want this? And that day I finally surrendered and I said, you know what I do? I want this. And something that day clicked in me and I wanted it enough for myself that I, I, I started doing the work and um, it wasn't easy, but it was absolutely life changing for me. 
So the way that this would relate to here on the blue is somebody, so when you were alone and you just started all this habits and like things were escalating, that's like somebody that is, you know, they stopped taking care of themselves, whether they got busy with, you know, as they got older with kids stuff. And so like they stopped caring about themselves because they were caring so much about other people. In the meantime, to combat being bored or being stressed or, you know, celebrations, public outings, whatever it might be, they've gradually gained weight. And I'm not like weight gain, weight loss doesn't matter to me. I didn't even ask you for your numbers yet when you, when you did the last belly burn because it doesn't matter to me, okay? What matters to me is the process and improvement, okay? And so when we do gain weight and we gain extreme amounts of weight and we're not happy with this weight, yeah. then that means that something needs to get fixed. And I'm not saying we could fix everything, but we need to address this issue. Like if somebody is, you know, there's somebody, there's people that have extreme amounts of wealth and there's people that have no wealth. There's people that are extremely unhappy with everything and there's people that are extremely happy or unhappy with everything and then happy with having minimal, right? And so if you are okay with whatever it is that you're doing and you're happy, then I think, well, then that's how you live your life. You know, like I can't, I'm, nobody can, nobody can judge you for that. You're happier than that person that works a nine to five, that makes, you know, multiple six figures, that has the family, this and that, but you're unhappy. And so if you're gaining this weight and you're unhappy in these habits, you know, you need to change them. Then I think it's time to make that change. And so a lot of people that are sitting at home and they're like, you know, oh, I know I need to eat better. You know, I'm just, you know, unhappy. And then they crack a white claw or they, you know, eat a whole bag of Doritos, right? And so they're out there. Now they're coming into the gym, right? So they've signed up for the five days. They're like, I'm in for the, I'm in for the month. And you know what, RJ, I'm going to just sign up for the year. This is what I want to do. But what happens in that first year is I find everybody goes through the biggest obstacles. So what has happened is they either like fall back into habits, right, of, of eating and then they fall into somewhat of a depression because they think that they have to be perfect in order for them to continue here. And so they're like, I'm ashamed, I'm not going back. Or they get sick and because they get sick, they lose that time and they're just like, I've lost all motivation and energy to go back or something happens with like their relationship status or you know they get an injury and they just mentally can't recover from it. And so I like you in this video because of the fact that you show like you went 47 days which at that point you're really establishing a lifetime routine but then you had a 2 week hiatus but then you got back on it June 7th, right? Mm -hmm. And it's been 9 years ever since. Right. 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 Now, I would think that the difference between the two is that like someone like yourself to be that consistent very long, I think is super inspirational. But I think that you're in the top 10 percentile. I think a lot of the people that especially when it comes to fitness and nutrition, like alcohol can really lead you down a dark path. Right. And so a lot of people will stop themselves before they even get to rock, rock bottom. Right. Whereas when it comes to eating and nutrition, it's everywhere. And so it's more socially acceptable to go out and eat every single day, you know, pizza and wine and this and that, like it's, it's okay. So I think when it comes to the gym setting, I'm not saying that it's tougher, but I think that the influence is a lot bigger it when is. it comes to the, the, you know, the, the bad habit world. Right. right. So for you to do nine years consistent of that, I think is amazing. But what I want people to understand from learning from you is that like, you know, you had that one two week and then like, it doesn't mean that it ended there. It just means you just had to, what is it that like, you know, how did you do that? How did you, what is the nine years of like consistency look like to you? So for me, that that consisted of making sure I was going to regular meetings. So making sure you're going to the gym. Mm -hmm. uh, if you feel like, you know, going out and having a, a banana split and going out and having burger and fries, mm -hmm. come to the gym instead. Yeah. Um, the stresses that hit you in everyday life, mm -hmm. um, you have to find better coping mechanisms. Mm -hmm. You have to want it bad enough for yourself. Mm -hmm. And you have to believe in yourself mm -hmm. um, and invest in yourself, really. 
So I went to meetings every day, Okay. Uh, sometimes more than one. So I come to the gym twice right. in the morning and if I need it in the afternoon or evening, mm -hmm. I come again. So if people are at home and then they find like they got time in the evening. So if they work out in the morning and then they got time in the evening, kids are all taken care of, you know, they don't have no events, da da da. And you're like, I want to eat. This is the time when I normally eat. Hop come come back to the gym or go for a walk or yeah. Walk, come to, come back to the gym, yeah, yeah. do so, okay. So switch, find those areas of weakness, so to speak, right? So if, like it could be, you know, nine at night, you know, you might have to go outside and go for a walk. Yeah. Like versus eating. Replace them with the bad habits. Yeah. Replace the good with the bad. Okay. And I replaced, um, you know, going for that ice cream with coming back to the gym or in just surrounding myself around people people that have like um like similar interests right mm -hmm. so um coming around people around the gym and i know we all we all struggle with food or we'll go have an ice cream or we'll, well you know mm -hmm. life's never going to be perfect yeah but striving towards um better habits mm -hmm. and surrounding yourself with people that are on the same mindset i think are extremely important mm -hmm. so when i quit drinking i had to remove those friends that drank like me right when I, did you ever get did you ever you ever been back with those people some of them yeah. but i had to set very clear lines or draw very clear very strong lines in the, in so the, what would be a line like let, let's say you're you're out you're like you know what i'm strong enough that i can go out it's like somebody going out for dinner with a group of people that they eat nothing but fried food cheese wine and you're you know you're trying to like eat cleaner and you know lose weight but maybe you've been doing this for six months you've done a couple belly burns you've got your nutrition down so you feel like you're strong enough mm -hmm. But you're in a room of eight people that are all like, have a drink, have, you know, have this, like have an appetizer, like you're already too skinny. Like, how do you deal with that? Um, you know, I just, I, I go out with the mindset and I, I make it very clear that I'm not having that drink. Mm -hmm. Having my drink of choice in my hand, whether it's my Diet Coke or my water or whatever else, so that somebody can't offer me something else mm -hmm. is, is a tool I use. Mm -hmm. Or I just simply tell them that, look, this is what I'm doing. And if you can't respect that, yeah. I can't hang around you. So was there people that didn't respect it? Absolutely. Yeah. So what did you, did you tell them anything or did you just walk away? Uh, some I walked away, some I told uh, friends that came back later on. I just set very clear boundaries that if we're hanging out, you can have a drink. That's not a problem, but I absolutely cannot. And if you try to influence me in any way, shape or form, I'm going to remove myself from the situation and we will not be, well, we won't be in the same room. We won't be hanging out. We, yeah. we just, I can't. Okay, so you made that decision and you made, and even though there was temptations to kind of bring those people back into your life, you decided that this wasn't healthy for you and it wasn't bringing you anywhere closer to where you wanted to be. Right. Okay, so let's end there. I wanna get into the next video where we talk about like where you're at now. So what am I talking about with people that are current members, okay? So they've evolved from prospects where they've seen our stuff on Facebook, you know, maybe they've seen, been watching us for like six to eight months and then they finally took the leap of faith, came in, did their first five days. The second video today, we're talking about in the mix of it where you're like, hey, I'm fully committed to this and this is like kind of some of the ups and downs that I've gone through. And then I wanna go into how do we make this, like how do we make fitness and sobriety or, you know, attaining and establishing good habits for the rest of our life. So how does that apply to you as an audience that you are now, okay, I know Friday nights is not, you know, eating Haagen-Dazs and, and ordering a, uh, a pizza with my husband, right? Now I go to the gym, uh, we get home, we have a good dinner and we take the dogs for a walk. Then it's like, okay, I'm into the mix of it, part two, where I'm coming to the gym consistently. I'm facing a lot of temptations, a lot of ups and downs, maybe a, a couple setbacks here and there, some breaks, whatever it is. And then now we're involving into, I come every day, right? And this is the advice that we wanna give to everybody of how you just like, this is now your new rock. Like the, this, is, this is what keeps me going forward because I think a lot of people when they hit their goals, they ask what's next. Right. So for some people, it could be to stop drinking and then they hit that stop drinking and then they're like, what's next? So in the next video, guys, we're going to talk about what is next.